So today I'm going to show you three shots that you're going to need every single time you step onto the golf course. And also, at the end of the video, a bonus shot, which is definitely going to lower those scores. So first up, the chip and run, the bump and run. Different names, but effectively the same shot. And this is going to be the go-to. You're going to hit this shot every single time you play golf. And effectively, we use it when we're just off the green, as I am here. You could argue that I could put this, but maybe I don't trust the ground. Maybe the grass is a little bit too long. Maybe it's a little bumpy. So I kind of just want the ball to lift over that ground, land on the green, and then roll out to the flag. So I selected a seven iron for this shot, but you would play this with an eight, with a nine, with a six, depending on where that flag is relative to you and how much green you've got to work with. So it's really all about keeping this as simple as possible, getting the ball as low as we can to the ground and just letting it roll out. Because it's rolling out to the flag, we have to read the green. It's gonna spend a lot of its time on the ground. So the first thing I have to do is, you know, assess the slopes and the undulations. This one is going to be swinging from the right and it's also a little bit uphill. I have to factor those things in, much like you would if you were putting. Now, in terms of the setup, we want a very, very narrow stance. My heels are probably no more than a club width apart, and I want that ball middle of my feet, and then a little bit of weight on my lead side puts the ball just behind my sternum, as you can see there. That means that when I'm letting my hands hang naturally, I'm gonna have a little bit of club shaft lean, as you can see there, not a huge amount. I also want to be stood nice and close to the golf ball. I'm gonna shuffle in, raise the grip up. It does a couple of things. It helps me with the direction of my stroke. It helps me limit the amount that the club face opens and closes, which is great for direction. And it also means that the toe gets a little bit lower, which is great for interaction with the ground. So all those things really make this shot much easier and increases your margin for error. In terms of the motion itself, I'm gonna be using very much my upper body. My shoulders are gonna be coming back, my shoulders are gonna be coming through. However, what they're gonna be doing is going to be reflected in what my legs are doing. So my legs aren't initiating any of these movements, but they are reacting to these movements. So you'll notice that as I move my shoulders back and through, there is some movement in my legs. You'll also notice that there's not a huge amount of wrist action. I do want some, but I want that to be natural. What I mean by that is, as I move back from backswing to downswing, there's going to be a little bit of lag in those wrists. So there is a little bit of wrist action, which is helping me with rhythm, helping me with feel and touch. I certainly don't want to be gripping that and locking those wrists in place, trying to keep it too stiff. It kind of looks like it might be quite efficient, but it's actually not great for touch or feel. So that's how you play it. What you then have to do is just make sure you visualize the shot that you're trying to hit. Where do you want it to land? As we've already discussed, what's the break on it? And then just going ahead, keeping those hands nice and loose on the golf club and trying to let it roll out to the flag up on the green. Little break off the right. Little strong, but not too bad. That's your basic chip and run. You're gonna use that every single time you step on the golf course. So from this situation, that's the shot I'd hit. It's kind of the mid-flighted pitch. It doesn't go super low, I'm not trying to hit it super high. It's just a kind of basic shot. And you can see here that I've got a bit of green. I could have bumped and runned it, but it's a few mounds, probably not the safest shot. So that is the one that I would choose. So I'm not gonna go in there for the most loft. I'm not gonna go in front of my mid irons. That was a 50, 60 degree. But you could play that with a 52. You could even play it with a pitching wedge. And we're after that kind of mid-flight. So how do we play it? Well. We need to add in a few things which encourage height. And what those things do is enable us to use the true loft that's on the golf club. The true loft is gonna be used when the club shaft is pretty vertical. So that's what we need to make sure is present and addressed. We've got that club shaft nice and vertical. So we want the ball pretty much middle of my heels. We want it pretty much underneath my sternum. And that means that my arms can just hang pretty naturally down from my body. Now for that low shot, we've got you to stand in really close. We don't really need that for this one because that tends to promote a lower ball flight. So I'm gonna stand a little further away, almost like where I would be if I was hitting a full shot with this club. And then during my backswing, I'm going to be using a little bit of wrist set. The way I want you to think about this is if I was to use no wrist set, we class that as zero. As much wrist set as I can, we're gonna class that as kind of five. 
and you can pretty much do anything in between. So there'll be zero, one, two, three, four, five. So you've got almost different levels and different amounts of wrist set. What we want on this shot is we want sort of one or two. We need a little bit of hinge because that allows us to have something that we can then release and sort of throw underneath the golf ball. And we're gonna find that we have a little bit of hinge on the way through. It's not excessive, but we're not sort of taking out all the wrists at all because that would generally promote that lower ball flight. Similar to what we said with that chip and run, as I move the club around my body, my lower body's reacting to it. It's not initiating the movement, I'm not driving with my legs, but it's reacting to what the weight of the club head is doing. And you can see how I'm using a little bit of wrist action, backswing and downswing, but not huge amounts. Contact with the ground is there. I'm trying to actively land my club basically where the ball is, but I'm doing it with the sole of the golf club, the bit where it says 56. If I do that, I don't take a divot. So I can actually be positive about hitting the ground and it actually gives me a little bit of margin for error. What we don't want to be doing on these shots is having anything in our setups, which is a steepening component. Ball back, hands forward, weight forward, picking the club up. All of those things create this steep approach and then you have to back up out of it, flex the arms to miss the ground. That's never gonna work. So everything we do is to encourage a bit of height, but more importantly, it's to encourage good contact with the ground. So that is how you hit the mid shot. We're now gonna move on to what is possibly the most difficult one, the super high one. So the high shot. Now this one is probably the most difficult. It's the one that many of you will fear the most. And there's good reason for that. Anytime we're trying to get the ball much higher when we are close to the green, it is a more difficult shot. So let's make it a little easier. Let's grab the club out of your bag with the most loft. For me, it's a 60 degree. Yours might be 58, it might be 64, whatever it may be, let's get the most loft in our hands. Now, we're gonna run you through you know, the basic technique that you're gonna use, but don't be forced into thinking you have to hit that shot. You look at the shot that I'm faced with here, clearly I've got a lot of this uh, fringe, I don't have a lot of room. So naturally the shot that would get the ball close is this really high flighted shot that stops pretty quick. But there's nothing to stop you playing a little bit out to the middle of the green. If you don't feel comfortable with a shot on the golf course, play the shot that you are comfortable with and work a little bit harder in this in practice. So that mid shot we've played, nothing to stop you playing that, middle of the green, two put, move on, you haven't cost yourself a shot. But if you wanna play that higher one, this is how you do it. So we've got the most loft. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to slightly open the club face to increase that loft even further. You can see that I've not opened it a huge amount, maybe some five or 10 degrees. And I need to make sure I'm doing that before I place my hands on the golf club. I don't simply want to take my hands on the club and then twist it open. It'll just return back to normal. So open the club face a little and then place your hands on. Now in terms of the setup, we want that ball kind of middle to slightly forward in the stance. So when I take an address to this ball, you can see how it's probably slightly forward in the middle of the me. You know, certainly more opposite my front foot and instep. And when I do that, it means that I'm able to set the club on the ground and have the club shaft nice and neutral. We don't want that club shaft length forwards. That's gonna make the ball go lower and probably more out to the right as well. And I'm also gonna make sure I'm stood a nice comfortable distance from the ball. I don't really wanna to get too close to this one. The closer I stand, the lower that ball is going. So there's my setup. Then we need to think about the motion. If we want height, we need speed because the higher the ball goes, the shorter it goes. So when we add height, we need to add speed. So what I'm looking to do in this little motion is I need to be making sure I'm creating some good angle between my lead arm and the club shaft and the backswing, some wrist set. And that wrist set will get taken out at impact and it will re-hinge on the way through. So we're creating this 90 degree angle here and this 90 degree angle here. That's gonna help me generate some speed down at impact, which is really, really key. I'm gonna support that with a body turn, a little body pivot. Notice how my weight is on the lead side, back heel has begun to lift, I'm facing the target, I'm nice and balanced. So we've got hinge, re-hinge, support it with the body. I'm accelerating the club through impact, massively important. Very often on these shots, depends on the situation, but slightly long is better than slightly short. So being positive is really key. 
Now, the other thing we have to be aware of is the contact with the ground. What does that look like? What are we intending to do? Well, hopefully if I do a little few practice swings here, you'll see. We want the club to be making contact with the ground. You can hopefully see and hear that happening there. What I'm not doing, however, is taking a divot. Because of the way I've set myself up with the face open and the shaft neutral and I'm feeling like I'm accelerating the club, it's the sole of my golf club which is interacting with the ground. That's really key. It means we're not going to dig and it gives us a slightly bigger margin for error. So the last thing is just to visualize the shot and fully commit to it. So face open, shaft neutral, see if we can get that ball somewhere near that flag. Higher flight, even that's finished a little bit right due to the slopes. Uh, probably wouldn't be unhappy with that, but maybe would have hoped for a slightly better result. But that's the high shot, definitely one that you're going to need during almost every round of golf you play. Right, the bonus shot. I actually covered this in a video a few months ago and had some really good comments, so I thought I'd include it in this one as well. You're basically going to take a wedge, I've got my 56 degree here, and you're going to use it like a putter. Difference is, we've got loft, so therefore the ball won't react like it would from putter, it's going to do something a little different. But when I say treat it like a putter, I mean exactly like a putter. So I'm going to take my putting grip, which is different to my full swing grip. I'm going to take my putting setup exactly as I would if I was hitting a putt. The only difference is I'm going to lean into my lead side, take the handle forwards with a little bit. I need a slightly descending blow. That is how I set up. And all I do is I literally hit a putt but I'm just trying to land the club on the ground where the ball is. And what we should get is a result a little bit like this. Ball pops up into the air, goes in. That's exactly why you'd play it. When you're really close to the green like I am here, you've got very little green to work with. It's a tricky shot, it's a delicate shot. Setting up like a putter often gives you a little bit more touch, a little bit more feel, allows you to play that shot. So. That's a little bonus shot, hitting a putt with your wedge. Can't guarantee that result, but you'll definitely get closer.